Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all here today. We've got cool mornings and warm afternoons. Kind of perfect for me, anyhow. Our first song this morning will be song number 108. 108, The Lord is in His Holy Temple. And let's all sing. The Lord is in His holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence and be song will be song number 469. 469. We sing the first and third verse of 469. Faith is the victory. 469. And again, let's sing. Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foe in veils below, let all our strength be heard. Faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Cause faith is the victory and faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. To him that overcomes the foe, white rain then shall begin. Before the angels he shall know his name confessed in heaven. Then onward from the hills of light, our hearts with love aflame will vanquish all the host of night in Jesus' conquering name. Cause faith is the victory, and faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We want to uh, welcome everyone here this morning. If you're joining us inside or if you're in the parking lot, we want to welcome you. Uh, we have a few announcements we need to make, and then we'll continue <coughs> with our morning worship service. A little bit of a change. Next Sunday, next Sunday evening, we will have our singing evening, and we'll celebrate our April birthdays. That'll be the second Sunday of the month, but uh, we have a lot going on on the third Sunday, so uh, that'll be our homecoming. On um, that'll be uh, April 21st. We have flyers for our homecoming out on the table there, so if you'd like to get some of those and send out to some of your friends, relatives that you'd like to invite for our homecoming, please do that. Uh, there's several out there, but if we need to make more, we'll certainly make some uh, more copies, additional copies of that. Uh, so that's out there. Also announcing in, on that flyer is our home our homecoming as well as our gospel meeting. So uh, remember that. Brother Chad will be doing that meeting for us. We're looking forward uh, to that. Speaking of Brother Chad, his family is not feeling well. Ada has a kind of a stomach bug, and uh, I think she might have passed it around to some of those. He's stayed away from that for the most part, but those are some things you don't want to share, but uh, they, it happens that way sometimes. So that's where they're at this morning, so remember them as they can continue to try to get better over that. April the 27th will be our men's breakfast. That will be the last Saturday of the month, and also the ladies will have their Bible study. Uh, so remember that, men, and also ladies for that day. There are um, several that uh, we also have a wedding coming up. That'll be April the 20th. So a lot of things going on this month. So remember that. This afternoon, there will be a gender reveal for uh, Ethan and uh, Truly. So remember that. That's 2 o'clock. If you are on, if you think it's going to be a boy, you bring baby wipes. If you think it's going to be a girl, you bring diapers, right? Uh, you have to have both of those, of course. So that'll be at 2 o'clock this afternoon. So remember that. You're all invited for that. Remember all of those that we have on our prayer list. You see that the, uh, the list there is very long, so remember all of those. Um, also want to remember the, the family of Carson Bowling. We all know the young student at, uh, from Cornerstone that was, was killed this past week in an accident. Uh, so please continue to remember that family. If we've overlooked something or we need to make any other announcements, please let us know. We'll make sure that gets announced for you. Thank you. Our next song will be song number 875. 875. 875. <laughs> we'll sing.
We'll sing the first and third verse of 875. <coughs> Home of the soul. And let's all sing. If for the price we have striven, after our labors are o'er, rest to our souls will be given on the eternal shore. Home of the soul, beautiful home, there we shall rest, never to roam, free from all care, happy and bright. Jesus is there, and he is the light, oft in the storm, lonely are we, sighing for home, longing for thee, beautiful home of the ransom beside the crystal sea. Soon the bright homeland adorning, we shall behold the glad dawn. Lean on the Lord till the morning, trust till the night is gone. Home of the soul, beautiful home, there we shall rest, never to roam, free from all care. Jesus is there, and he is the light, oft in the storm, lonely are we, sighing for home, longing for thee, a beautiful home of the ransom beside the crystal sea. have our scripture reading and opening prayer. We'll sing song number 827, please. Sing the first and third verse of Sweet Hour of Prayer. Following this song, we'll have our scripture reading and opening prayer. 827. Again, let's all sing. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempter's snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, thy wings shall my petitions bear to him whose truth and faith Since he bids me seek his face, believe his word, and trust his grace, I'll cast on him my every care and wait for the sweet hour of prayer. This morning's scripture comes from Matthew 16, verses 24 and 25. And Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Let's pray together. Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to come together this morning to spend time in worship to you. And we pray that we've come here for no other reason but to worship you this morning. We're just thankful for this opportunity that we have to come to you in prayer to express to you our desires and needs and to give thanks to you for all that you do for us each and every day of our lives. We have so many blessings that we can't count them all. 
and we're thankful for that. We know that there are those that would like to be here this morning, but they're not able to be due to sickness. We have several that are on our prayer list that we just ask that you be with each and every one of them. That you know all of their individual needs. You be with those also that are administering care to them. We have those of our number who have upcoming tests this coming week. We just ask that you be with them and be with the doctors as they perform these tests, that they will be results that are desired from the, from the patient. We just thank you for all of those that we know about and we love all each and every one of them. Just ask your blessings to be upon them. We know that we sometimes sin, we fall short. <coughs> we would ask that you would be with us and forgive us of our sins and that you would help us to have a giving spirit to those that we come in contact with as well. Continue with us, guide us and guard us in everything that we do through your word and through your will. We have so much to be thankful for, as I mentioned, but we also are most thankful for your son, Jesus, whom you sent to this earth to live an example before us to die the cruel death upon the cross that we through him might have opportunity of everlasting life in heaven with you and with him. And it's in Christ's precious name that we do pray. Amen. To help prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper, we're going to sing song number 365, please. We'll sing one, two, and three, all three verses of How Beautiful. Following this song, we'll partake of the Lord's Supper. 365. And again, let's all sing. How beautiful the hands that serve the wine and the bread and the sons of the earth. How beautiful the feet that walk the long dusty roads and the hill to the cross. How beautiful, how beautiful, how beautiful is the body of Christ. How beautiful the radiant bride who waits for her groom with his light in her eyes. How beautiful when humble hearts give the fruit of pure lives so that others may live. How beautiful, how beautiful, how beautiful is the body of Christ. How beautiful the feet that bring the sound of good news and the love of the King. How beautiful the hands that serve the wine and the bread and the sons of the earth. How beautiful, how beautiful, how beautiful is the body of Christ. As we prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper, I'd like to read a couple of verses. I will be reading from Luke chapter 22, starting in verse 19. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Let's give thanks for the bread. To God, we ask your blessings on this bread that the Christians represent your son's body as he died on the cross for our sins. We pray that everyone who takes this does it well, please, and manner to you. And these things we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
God, likewise, we ask your blessings on this cup that the Christians represent through Christ, Christ's blood as he died on the cross for our sin. We pray that everyone who takes this as a well pleasing man to you and these things we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Song, song at the close of the lesson will be song number 915, and we'll sing one, two, and, and uh, five of that song. 915 will be the invitation song. The song before the lesson will be song number 895. We'll sing all three verses, and then we'll have our lesson. Why don't we stand? If it's convenient, go ahead and stand. 895, I'll live in glory. Let's all sing. I'd like to stay here longer than man's allotted days and watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven ways. But if my Savior calls me to that sweet home on high, I'll live with Him forever in glory by and by. Oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by. I'll tell and sing love stories. service along the pilgrim way and lead the lost to Jesus as fervently I pray as day by day I travel I'll keep him ever nigh and live with him forever in glory by and by oh yes I'll live in glory by and by I'll tell and sing love stories there on high there with my dear no more. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory by and by. The end I know is nearing. By faith I look away to yonder post of kernel, the land of endless day. I'll cling to him forever and look beyond the sky. Dear Redeemer, and no more to die. 
I made it up here without falling. I did it. I'm telling you, pretty much every time I come up here, I'm always like, am I gonna fall today? One of these days, maybe it'll happen and you'll all get a big laugh out of it. Speaking of laughs, I, I wanted to start off with just a few simple little uh, Bible jokes, I guess, if you want to call them that. I, I like it. Now, sometimes there are situations to where I don't want to joke. It's a very somber subject, and it's just not appropriate. Um, but I believe a lot of times when we can start out smiling and relaxed, it will help us maybe to focus more, to enjoy looking at God's Word, and to have a an attitude of readiness and togetherness uh, to be able to dive into God's Word instead of what are we eating for lunch and when are we going to get out of this place or something along those lines. So I've just got four quick ones for you this morning. It wasn't the apple in the tree that got them in trouble or that got us in trouble. It was the pear on the ground. All right. Adam and Eve, if you didn't get that. I don't need to ever tell you, do I? Aside from Adam and Eve, who in the Bible had no parents? Joshua, son of Nun. How many of each animal did Moses bring on the ark? None. Moses was never on the ark. Come on, didn't you know of that? All right, and then the last one. Of course, I believe in free will. What choice do I have? All right, and that last one is actually dealing with what we're talking about this morning. So, it's a subject that I don't know if you've ever had a lesson on. I'm not sure I've ever heard specifically a lesson on this subject. Predetermined, predestined, predestination. And what even that might mean? Is it biblical? Is it a biblical term? What does it mean if it is? And so, it may bring a lot of questions to your head, a lot of thought uh, provoking information and some might say that predestination is that your future is already determined there's nothing that you can do or say to change it whether you go to heaven or not whether you're going to be a faithful Christian or not and make it to the end and as any good question that relates to spirituality where should you look for to find the answers? Do we look at each other and say, well, I think, well, I think, well, I think, well, you think, well, maybe. What do we do? We go to the Bible. And so that's what we're going to do today as we're talking about this subject. And this subject is not necessarily for you specifically to know because most of you if not all of you in here already know probably what the Bible has to say about this even if you can't think of scriptures that specifically deal with the matter as we said this morning in Bible class you can look through the Word of God and find answers to questions that were in five books back because it's one Word of God it's one book it's all connected together and sometimes the answers are not immediately in the scripture that you're looking at but you can look through the entire Bible and find the answers that you're looking at but this is not necessarily just for you but you may one day have a conversation with someone about this subject and they want to know the answers and you can have this lesson hopefully that will help you to answer those questions biblically and not just I think I think I think so what does the Bible say about predestination does the Bible even mention the word or not well first of all let's go to John chapter 5 
John chapter 5, verse 24. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and what? And believes him who sent me has eternal life. So there's a couple of different things here. First of all, you've got to hear his word in order to believe it. But then who does believe, the people who do believe, and belief is uh, all throughout the Bible. And it doesn't necessarily just mean, I believe it's true, but I'm willing to do something about it. And then it says, whoever believes him who sent me, and then what is the, the effect of that cause? He will have eternal life. So that would open it up to seemingly anyone, right? Not just ones that are selected or predestined. So it sort of already answers it just in this one scripture. But we're going to look at a lot more than just this one scripture. And then it continues, he does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. In Matthew chapter 16, we can also look, starting in verse 24, then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, if anyone, not you, not people in the past, not people only in the future or only in the present, if anyone would come after me. So that means we've got a choice. We've got the ability to choose to come after him or not. Again, Matthew 16, 24 is right there. So what then are we to do? If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. There's those big words again. Whoever. Not just a select few. Not just the ones who are chosen. But whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever will lose his life for my sake will find. Again, what are we talking about? Salvation, right? We'll find life. If you want to find it, if you want to save yourself, rather, you're going to lose it. But if you lose yourself for his sake, then you can find life. Anyone that would come after me. All right. What is predestination? Again, we're going to answer that question more as we go throughout it. Does the Bible talk about predestination specifically? If so, what does it mean? What does it say? How does it refer to the subject? So let's go to Romans chapter 8. Again, if, well, I don't know if I've said this this morning, but I think Anthony did. Uh, or Al did. I can't, I'm not sure. There is an outline for this lesson on the back of the bulletin. Please get it. Or if you would like it and you don't have it in your hand right now, if you'll raise your hand, somebody will bring it to you. Does anybody want it and doesn't have it? Okay. All right. Before we get too far into the lesson. lesson. Does the Bible talk about predestination? If so, what does it mean? Romans chapter 8, starting in verse 29. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to their image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. So somebody might look at this scripture and think, oh, well, maybe there is. This word called predestination, that means that God has already chosen. That is not what it's saying, and we're going to look deeper into it to realize that. But it does use the word predestined in, I suppose, some versions. And it says, he foreknew, he also predestined those who he foreknew. So what is the meaning of this in this Romans chapter 8, starting in verse 29 scripture? What is it talking about? 
oftentimes we need to study deeper not just take one verse pull it out of context and assume it means exactly what i think it means just from reading the one verse so let's go back a verse to verse 28 very familiar scripture here and we know that for those who love God all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose two things two things first of all who is this talking to for those who love God those who choose to love God those who want to live for God if you love me, keep my commandments. Do my will. If you love me, do you love me? I love you. Do you love me? I love you. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. For those who love God is who this is talking about. That's who, if you do this, if you love God, that's who gets to have all things work together for good. Those who are called according to his purpose. And we, we have people use that phrase as well. What are you called to do? Does the Bible use that as some people use it living today? I don't think so. What does it mean to be called to do something according to the Bible, according to God? I believe that it means... Anyone that would come to him, anyone that would choose him, is answering his call. It's to everyone. We've already looked at those scriptures. It's not a select few who are only called to do his will. Everyone is called, but not everyone will do it. Not everyone will choose God. But for those who are called, who do choose God, according to his purpose. So we can look at Romans uh, 8. And if we only look at verse 29 and 30, we might get confused. But back up a verse, back up a few verses, see what is there. In fact, let's do it one more time. Verse 27. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And if you go back even further, you find other familiar scriptures and then you put it all together and it starts making a lot more sense. God searches our hearts and he can know anyone that would come to him. We talked about him knowing anything he wants to know this morning in Bible class. He certainly can know our heart. Jesus knew the heart of men while he was here on the earth. God can know our hearts and he can know anyone that would come to him. Or you might say that is called anyone that it would come to him. And I believe these are the predestined. It's not anything God's doing. It's what we're doing for God. It's what we're choosing to do for God, whether we're coming to him or not. Because, of course, he can search our hearts and know anyone that would want that. So the ones who are called or anyone that would hear his call. After all, right before he says that, he says those who love God, those who choose God, those who connect to God, those who hear the calling of God. And I hope that helps to start clear this subject up. So if you ever have a conversation with someone else about predestination, you can go to these scriptures and talk to them about it in a biblical way. And not have to hem haw. Well, I just don't think that's what God means. Well, look at the scriptures and have a biblical conversation if you can. I think that's always the better way. So God can know anyone that would come to him. He's not making us come to him. He's not choosing people out of a select group. After all, we're neither free nor slave. We're neither male nor female. We're neither Greek nor Jew. It is for everyone. That's the beauty of the calling. Anyone can answer it. 
It is for everyone. He wants everyone to come to him. He doesn't just want to select few. Don't twist them up. Don't pull something out. And we know that he can know who's going to choose him because he is all knowing. So, of course, he could know the people that would choose him in their life. But it's still their choice. It is free will, just like in the beginning in the Garden of Eden. It always has been that way. All right. So we looked at those two things already. Next, let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. And this is really the scripture that started me out on this study, on this lesson for you this morning. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 through 7. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Who is us? Christians, right? In Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You, if you want a little more history on Ephesians, go back a few verses. Start at the very beginning, but I didn't want to read all of that just for you this morning. But please, by all means, go back and read uh, the history of Ephesians, who's writing it, who's it written to, and so forth. But it's to Christians, those who would be faithful and come to him, even as he chose us. Again, he's not pulling people out, but those who choose God, that's who he knows are his followers. That's how he knows that we're his followers, because he knows we're, what we're going to do. In him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. And what is his will? We know that his will is that all would come to him. 2 Peter 3, 9, one of my most favorite scriptures, I quote it all the time. Because it tells us he wants everyone to come to him. He doesn't wish that any per perish, but that all would come to him. He's patient. He's not slow or slack. He's patient, waiting, hoping, wishing that all would come to him. And of course, he can know the ones that are come to him or that will come to him. And so they are the chosen ones, not because he chose them, but because we have chosen God. So God does not choose you or me. He wants everyone. It's not like we're playing a game of kickball and we're standing there just hoping that God's going to pick us to be predestined, to be the saints. It's not the way it works. That may be the image some people have in their heads when they read Ephesians 1. But you look at the entire Bible, that is not the picture that God gives us. Nothing like that. He wants everyone to come to him. You won't have to be picked last when it comes to God. He picks everyone first. You don't have to be the awkward kid standing in, in there being the last one that nobody wants. Yeah? God wants everyone to come to him. I hate picking that way, by the way. Uh, when, I, when I was youth minister and we'd play games with the kids all the time, and, and we play games here, and I love it when we play games. Sometimes we pick captains. And we say, all right, you pick your team. I don't like doing it that way. So what's the preferred method? I like the one, two, one, two, one, two method. That way you're either a one or you're a two and you just go to your team. No one's picking somebody last. Okay. We don't have to worry about that with God because we're not playing kickball. We're not playing dodgeball. He picks everyone. And we can look at John chapter one. Verse 12 through 13. But who all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Anybody that comes to him has the ability to be his child. It's a beautiful scripture. 
and it, it lays it out for us in a better way for us to understand this principle. Anyone can come to him and those who do can become his children. And then number two, we choose God. Another very quotable scripture that you may know off the top of your head, Joshua 24 and verse 15. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods, little g, your father served in the region beyond the river, or the little g gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I love this scripture. It may be hanging on your wall in your house right now. I believe it is at mine. I love this scripture. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You get to choose whether you serve God or not. It's a beautiful thing. It's not always an easy thing to choose God in your life. And it's not just a once time, one, one time decision. It's a daily decision. You've got to choose God every day. You stop choosing him and what happens? Other things take his place. Other things become your God, just like here in Joshua. Which God are you going to serve? Because you're going to serve something. You are going to live for something. Is it money? Is it job? Is it fishing? Is it sports? I don't know. I don't know what it is. I hope it's God. The God. Not the God of the Amorites. Not the God of your fathers before you. Not the God of whatever someone told you once upon a time. It's what you should dream for. But the God. The Lord God. Choose him. And that's what I want to do as for me and my house. Doesn't mean I do it perfectly. But we can do it faithfully. Walk in the light as he is in the light and have fellowship with one another. The question is, do you choose God or are you still waiting for him to choose you? Because you don't have to wait any longer if that's the case. He has already chosen you. He wants everyone to come to him. You can look at a very... Uh, Another very quotable scripture, John 3, 16. And if any scriptures in the Bible that you can quote, it's probably this one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish or should not perish but have everlasting life. He loves everyone and he wants everyone to come to him. It is our choice. I hope this lesson's been helpful, been meaningful, something that you can apply to your life, some conversation that you can have with someone else about this subject. But again, it's our choice whether we choose him or not. And now the question comes to you. If you need to choose him in your life and you have not, you want to be called a child of God. You want to be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Or if you were and have, but you've fallen away, you've left him, you need help in some way, you want prayers, you want to be forgiven by God. I can't forgive you, but God can, and we can pray with you and for you. If we have anything that we can do for you in a public manner, won't you come while we sing together? When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word.
six o'clock tonight same place same same story actually so there we go. is there anything we need to talk about we have several on our prayer list we have uh, several that have been added this week and uh, once again I'm going to put a plug in for the remind app it keeps me up to speed on what's going on and who's who and what's what's happening so if you have an opportunity to uh, to look at the remind app do it if you don't have it get with somebody in here and they'll, they'll help you get it uh, what we got coming up? We got a, a wedding coming up, right? And we have when's the uh, the meeting coming up? When's that? That's April twenty first through twenty fourth. Wedding meeting, just like yeah, that. Exactly. Okay, exactly. wedding meeting. Okay, okay. Two p.m. today. Gender reveal. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, okay. Something about wipes and stuff, right? <laughs> so, something about that. You guys know what to do. Okay. All right. You know what to do. Anything else we need to talk about? We're going to sing the first verse. If not, we're going to talk, sing the first verse of 852, and then we'll be dismissed. See you back here at 6, all right? 852. When the roll is called up, yanda. Let's all sing. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair, when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up, yanda, there when the roll is called up yonder and when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder I'll be there no y'all wouldn't believe that I forgot somebody this morning but uh couple that I needed to, to mention that did not. Uh, Baby Ellie has, uh, she did well with her surgery at the end of last week, but she's been in a lot of pain. They had to have her on some morphine and things, but uh, she did have a better day the last couple of days, so continue to remember her and, of course, her mom and dad. <clears throat> Miss Arlene's got to have some tests this next week, so uh, I want to remember her. She's going in for tests on Monday and Wednesday, I believe, so remember her this coming week. And also, I failed to mention that uh, Ethan's grandmother had passed away, so please continue to be with that family in your prayers as well. we got to remind out that Andy's father also wasn't doing well, uh, so I want to continue to remember uh, Andy's father. And he was back in the hospital, I believe, so remember all of those. And you've all ever been driving down the road and seen this, this cow, and he's, he's got the barbed wire stretched really far, reaching the grass that's on the outside of the fence. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, we'll read the, bulletin and read the article in the bulletin written by Brother Chad this morning, okay? <laughs> all right, let's pray together. 
Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for watching over us. Thank you for another opportunity that we have to come here this morning to sing songs to you and to worship you, God. But thank you for this building that we have that makes it so comfortable for each of us. Just thank you, God, for the nation that we live in and for the privileges that we have. I pray, God, that you just watch over us. God has scars protect us. I pray that you watch over all those that were on the prayer list, all those that were just previously mentioned, those that have procedures coming up, God, those that have tests that need to be run, and those that have lost loved ones. I pray, God, that each uh, member here knows that we all have each other's backs and that we're always here for each other. I pray, God, that you please just be with us as we depart. Keep us safe on this day. And we thank you, God, most importantly for your son, Jesus. And it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Amen.